Hello and welcome. I'm doing a video on how to build a Shadowrun 5th edition character in Chummer. Uh, this is a program that's free. And to get there, you need to go to github.com. And then you're going to search for Chummer in the search, in search bar engine. And then you're going to go to Chummer 5A. This is going to get you the newest version, latest version here. So you just scroll down to where it says latest version. You click on here. And then this is your latest release. And then you just download your zip file. Open it with 7-zip or another zip program which you can get from 7-zip. That's also free. And you can just go to zip, 7zip.org and get the newest version of 7-zip if you need to unzip a file. Okay, so next thing is you have your Chummer downloaded. You're going to open it up. This is an older version, but you can use any version you like. It's all going to work pretty much the same way. You're going to go to File, New Character, and then you get to choose what kind of method you want to build your character. The standard way to build a character is with priority. So it's priority, standard, availability is going to be 12 maximum at character creation by uh, rules as written. You can click OK. And in here you can choose which priority you want to have. You have what type of meta type you want, what type of attributes, whether or not you want to be a magician, technomancer, adept, or mundane. Or you can also do what's called a mystic adept which is like a mix between a magician and an adept. Uh, I usually try to avoid that because it's stretched way too thin in my opinion but uh, this is something you could play around with. So the higher your attribute is or your uh, priority is in an attribute it's like for money it's 450,000 yen is A, B is 275 etc. So you just go through here, you pick what type of um, meta type you want. You can do a dwarf, elf, human, orc, or troll. If you choose down at a lower priority for what meta type you want, you're going to have less choices. And also another thing to look at is when you choose, say, a dwarf, you're only going to get one special, a special attribute. This is an attribute you could spend on either your magic or your edge. So you can choose Elf, which gives you 3, Human, it gives you 5, Orc, which gives you 0, and that's if you're choosing at level C. This is going to change. If you choose an A, you're going to get more special attributes. If you choose at a lower level, we'll say like Elf at D, you're going to get 0 special attributes. Okay, so one of the things to note is when you're choosing your type of character, it's going to give you different attribute scores depending on the character. Some start a little bit higher like Elf. You're going to get more charisma, more agility starting out. And you're going to have a higher uh, second number here which is your uh, limit. You can only have one attribute at a certain limit. So if you have agility at say level 7, you can't take reaction at 6. Because you your maximum limit is 7 for this one, maximum limit is 6. You can only have max limit for 1. So if you do choose like an elf, that actually makes it so you can have a 7 in agility, whereas if you're a human, you can only have a 6 in agility if you maxed it out. And also you start at 2 instead of you know 1. Same thing with charisma over here, it starts you at 3 and max limit is 8. Okay, so once you choose what you want, you're going to choose down here whether what type of magic you want. Let's say if you're wanting to do a mage, cl click in here, you can choose magician. If you want to do an adept, here, technomancer, here. So if you have any idea what Shadowrun is and how it works, you'll understand what these mean. Basically a magician, you can cast spells, you can summon creatures, and you can do all kinds of magic, magic stuff, heal people with magic, mystic adept, or just adept. Adept, you can do magic with your body, so you can jump higher, run faster, run up walls, that kind of thing. 
Mystic Adept is kind of a mixture between a Magician and an Adept where you're going to have those um, abilities an Adept has and you're also going to be able to cast some spells. Um, in my opinion, it's not very good because it tries to... You don't really have enough attributes to cover everything that you want to do. When you choose, say, a Mage, then it's going to ask you what talent section you want. You can choose two. Um, so things like spell casting and counter spelling, those are two good ones. And if you choose those two, they will start at five at that level. If you're doing a lower level and you want to play a mage at a lower level, you're not going to have the five. It's going to be a three and five. So that's something to look at. All right, so once you're done choosing what type of character you want, I'm just going to, for now, put it on... Uh, so I'm going to go for some mundane character and I'm going to get a lot of money and then I'm going to do B for attributes so you get 20 attributes to spend and that's going to go into these slots here these are going to increase you can increase 20 of these things and then um, that looks good so I'm just going to choose mundane and I'm going to show you how this works oh this is meta variant um, I really didn't mess around with this too much. These slight variations. This is going to be kind of GM dependent. Your GM may not want you playing a ghoul, for instance. So you're going to have to talk to them about that. So I'm just going to put none. So you hit OK. And then, uh, so here is your character creation screen. This is the common screen. This is where you can add your qualities. So you have positive qualities. So things like uh, blandness, meaning it's harder for people to remember who you are once you leave a crime scene or something. You can do that. If you wanted cat-like, that'll give you bonuses, like some cat-like abilities. Um, th different stuff here. Uh, exceptional attribute. These things uh, doesn't explain in Chummer, so you're going to have to go to the book. So say exceptional attribute. You want to know what that is? You go to Shadowrun Five Source Book, page 72. So, if you go in here to wherever you keep your rule books and open up your Shadowrun, or if you just have a regular uh, paper copy, then you go in here and you're going to look up um, your page where that is. So, 573 because it counts the title page as a page. Yeah, come on. Okay, it's not working. All right. Well, I'm just going to scroll down. All right. So let's just keep scrolling. Hold on. Did I read that wrong? Oh, 72. That's why. Okay. 72. And you go to the page and... Of course, I put 72. But here's your qualities. So if you want to know what quality that is, you go through here in your search. And you look for, say, cat-like. So a character with cat-like qualities, gifted with uncanny elegance, stealth, blah, blah, blah. This is going to tell you what that does, and this quality adds a plus two dice pull modifier to sneaking. So that's cool. So you get plus two anytime you want to sneak. All right, so that's your attributes. So you have positive and negative. So positive are going to give you, are going to take karma to spend. When you spend karma, you have a 25 to start with. If you want more karma, you can take negative qualities and things like addiction, blah, blah, blah. And if you look in the Shadowrun books, it tells you right here where the source book is. It'll tell you what those do. And up here, it tells you minus nine karma. That means you're going to gain nine karma to spend. If you take positive qualities, it costs you karma to use. So if you see a negative here, that means you get karma. If you see a positive here, that means it costs you karma. Alright, so, next thing you want to do 
is um, once you look at the qualities you want to do, you can start choosing your attribute scores here. So attribute scores are going to um, they're going to uh, point to like a skill that you can use those attributes in. So say agility, it's going to say automatics is agility weapons based skill. So firearm skill group, it's a combat skill, agility, and it starts at six because your attribute score is seven. And if you're not trained in a skill, it's a minus one. So you're defaulting minus one. So agility seven, skill rating zero. So if you start putting skill points in here, it automatically needs to go up to eight instead of seven. So it goes from six to eight because you're no longer defaulting, so you don't get that minus one. Now you can put up to six agility points in to automatics, or six uh, skill points in automatics, and that'll give you an overall rating of 13 because you add your skill rating to your agility, so six plus seven is 13. Now you can uh, take a specialization, like in assault rifles, and that'll give you a 15 when you roll on assault rifles. If you want to do machine pistols, you got machine pistols, etc. So that gives you a plus two with one point of your skill points. Now you also have skill groups, so it's like influence. So if you put points from a skill group, which are over here, skill groups, zero of two, I just spent my two skill points into influence. So if you look down here, it's going to show you what all the influence abilities are. So your skills that are influence are etiquette, leadership, and negotiation. So if you look here, there's a white box with a two in it. It's grayed out. That means you can't add any more because it's part of a skill group. You can only add that at character creation as part of a group. So that's going to be stuck at five. So if you don't want to use your skill group you just click over here turn it off and then you can go back to edit kit and start adding points but if you do decide to go with influence as your skill group it'll give you etiquette it'll give you leadership it'll give you negotiation and those are all going to start with a two in it because you have two skill groups now active skills we got 21 spent out of 28 so these numbers here are going to change depending on what priority that you take your skills at. So if you take skills at higher priority, you're going to get more skill groups and more active skills. If you take it at a lower, you're going to get less of both. All right, so Nuyen. Nuyen's your money. You can buy stuff with Nuyen. Um, most notably is your street gear. You're going to buy a lot of clothing, weapons, and armor. Um, what I like to do is I go up to this button that says Special and I add packs kit. This is usually what I do when I create a new character. I'll go in here and I'll choose a community pack. So these are a couple of the um, nets that I play on sometimes. There's Runner Hub and Shadow Net. Um, so you can choose one of the community packs and they'll give you a lot of the gear that you need to start out with. Um, so this is the Runner Hub's gear packs and you got your penny pitcher pack so if you're playing a mage and you don't have a lot of money to spend you can do like penny pitcher pack if you're doing a new unit of A you can go to your basic gear and it'll give you a lot of stuff so this is really good to know it has a lot of stuff that's uh, very important like your lifestyle your armor your weapons gear so you're gonna need a comm link you know usually you have a main comm link that you use and then you get a throwaway comm link so Hermes icon is an expensive comlink that you're going to use as your comlink when you're talking to your buddies. But if you have some questionable people calling you, then you give them your meta link number. Then you got trodes. Those are going to allow you to go into the matrix for a character that doesn't have a cyber implant that does that for them, like a DNI. Um, microtransceiver allows you to talk to your group without anybody else being able to hear you. Uh, it also comes with a a uh, sub vocal mic and an earpiece so this is good to have camera so those cameras good for a lot of things you can you know have a camera on you um, playing you know, your what you're seeing to your group so they can see what you're doing 
and if they have an image link on their contacts, if they have image link implanted on their eye or something, they can see what you're sending them. <clears throat> now, uh, you can wear contacts, you can have glasses, and you can put modifications on these. These are good things to have. Vision enhancement, that'll give you a little bonus to your vision-based uh, <clears throat> perception tests. And then you have audio enhancement, that gives you bonuses to your audio-based perception tech tests and select sound filter all this stuff you're going to be able to find oh I gotta put in a value for fake sin so when you have a sin you gotta put in a value for it so usually that's some kind of person's name Tom Jones so that's your fake name that you go by when you're talking to the cops now if you're <clears throat> carrying uh, any concealed weapons you're gonna need like a concealed weapons permit so you're going to want that and then you're going to get your um, weapons license which is going to be separate from that so you can get like a uh, you know exotic weapon you might want to get a license for that you get if you have heavy weapons if you just have pistols you can get a pistol license um, a good thing just to get is a basic weapons license it's going to you're going to want to talk to your DM depending on if he wants to give licenses for everything sometimes DMs are like picky about that or GMs are very picky about that they're gonna want licenses for every little piece of gear you have someone will say you know someone will just say get a military weapons license that'll cover everything or just get a weapons license and that'll cover everything so there's that if you have any uh, cyberware that's gonna be restricted you wanna get a le license for that so rest restricted cyberware license all right, so next thing you're gonna do um, once you have all your scores in here, you want to pick. So if you're gonna be doing like uh, automatic weapons, you're gonna want skills in automatics. So you're gonna come over here and you go over to automatics, and you're gonna want a good score in that. The higher your score here, the more dice you're gonna roll, the better chances of you being successful with that weapon. Now, another thing you want to uh, look at is go through all these things, find out what they do, go through the books, find out what all these things do. This is all going to be in the Shadowrun 5th edition handbook. Um, there's down here knowledge skills. Um, so to get a knowledge school, skill, you just add skills. Go down here and it has a bunch of skills you can learn. Uh, one of the things you're going to want to do is learn either um, English or uh, city or whatever they call it in the new version of 5th edition uh, handbook so if you put English it'll say in here that means it's your native language so you don't have to spend anything into that if you spend points that means a second language so you're gonna have to put points in there and those are gonna be dice you roll to use that language but if it's your native language you just put it in there so if you added a second language say I don't know Spirithiol. Let's go down here and say Spanish Spirithiol. All right, so you know if you speak a second language, you put points into it, and that's going to be your second language, and you'll have to roll that to speak or read or write in that language. You could specialize either read, write, or speak, lingo, dialect, etc. Uh, another skill you can add is. Um, say firearms if you know a lot about firearms you could put that as a skill now it's notice here it says free knowledge skill bonus points remaining it says negative two of four so you're only allowed to have four for free you can add more if you wanted to with karma but that would be in this box here okay so next you're gonna want to um, go through all these you know, spend all your points. You got 21 out of 28 now. Uh, all the knowledge are spent. If you're doing a uh, spell casting character, you're going to have spell tab and you can choose your spells from there. And this essence box here, it says six. I'm at six essence. Uh, this is a limiting factor on your spells and what kind of um, cyberware or bioware you can get. So if you have less essence, it's going to limit your spell casting. Um, so 
the only way to really lose essence is either in game something happens to you or by adding cyber and bioware since you're I'm uh, starting out with a um, non magical character I don't really care too much about essence except for that it can't go to zero uh, that you have to always be above zero you can have point zero one and still be fine but if you go point zero zero you're dead so add cyberware so once you add say like dermal plating that's gonna give you more armor so you can have ratings here and at character creation you could only go up to 12 now next to that is R so that's restricted so to have uh, 12 R dermal plating you're probably gonna wanna get a license for that so you get your cybernetic restricted license so if you get stopped by the cops or something you can flash it to them and hopefully you won't go to jail now here it says it costs essence of 1.5 so when you hit OK that takes away from your essence here so you can only have so much cyberware and bioware so let's look at bioware so something like a journal pump that's a good thing to have adrenaline um, hit OK see it goes down again now if you add too much and it goes down to zero you, that's illegal character you can't do that basically you're dead at that point <clears throat> so with the rating system you always look at the availability you can't go over 12 anything that's F is forbidden so if someone catches you with the forbidden thing you're gonna be in trouble now notice too down here it has the cost in new yen or money so that's gonna be loaded here so if you're spending new yen you can't go below zero here that's self-explanatory if you have three hundred forty three thousand dollars and you go to negative numbers you're in debt and you can't do that at character creation unless you take a quality for debt so if you add quality in debt in debt your character is in debt but you don't get any money for that it only gives you karma okay so that was cyberware and bioware so another thing to note about cyberware is it takes more karma or not more karma it takes more essence when you're adding Bioware and then you have different grades so if you put used it's gonna cost you less money and it's gonna cost you more essence so you can get some used Bioware or bodyware um, if you go to like a cyber limb so you get a used leg alright so you get a used leg it's going to cost you 1.25 essence and eleven thousand dollars if you get it new so you just get standard it's going to cost you less essence but more money now if you go up to alpha wear it's going to cost you less essence and more money so let's say you go down to beta wear you think that's cool that's uh, great however look at your availability if you go too far down the list you know you can't get it zero availability you go to gamma where it's 16 availability you can't get that at character creation so if you go down to delta where that's fine it's at 12 availability you can get that it's gonna cost you a lot of money for that but it's gonna cost you a little bit of essence compared to if you get it at standard or used so one essence compared to 0.5 essence so you're saving half essence so that's uh, cyberware now bioware another thing to note here too is you have bodyware you have cosmetic stuff like you know boobs uh, you can get chameleon processor cosmetic surgery all that kind of stuff this is all cosmetic it doesn't really need to do anything for your character it's just uh, nice to have I guess if you want to describe your character a certain way um, if you do body wear, that's like your um, bone lacing, auto injectors, kill switch, and then if you go down to um, weapon implant, you can get 
these kind of weapons here. All right, so if you go down to uh, eyewear, that's your eyes. You get low light vision, image link, all that kind of stuff built into your head. There's headwear. That's things like your comlink and cyber jacks and stuff, data jacks. So those are all in your headwear. All right, so now let's look at Bioware. So Bioware is going to be a little bit more expensive. They're going to do slightly different things. However, you can get stuff like Cat's Eyes, which gives you night vision. Now, this is going to be more expensive, and it's going to take a lot less essence, but it's not going to show up on things like scans and stuff because it's, you know, biomaterial. It's not, you know, pieces of metal that's going to show up on a metal detector. So you have your basic, and same, same thing with the grades, and then you can go to ortho skin, which is like, you know, thicker skin, and then you got symbiotes, and you can go through these. Just look up where where it says booster endorsement or whatever that is, and go to your source down here. You could look up in Chrome Flesh, page 123, and you can see what that does. So that's good to know. And then you have um, my favorite, which is Cultured. This is your boosted reflexes, which gives you, you know, good reflexes. You can do pain editor. However, you got to look at the availability. So you cannot get used Bioware. So you can only get standard or better. Uh, things like cerebellum booster, cerebral booster. These are all good to have if you want to boost your, you know, reflexes and agility. Um, I think this is intelligence. So those are all good to have. Um, and the more of these you have, remember, you got to watch your essence. Street gear. All right, so you have your lifestyle. So this is a low lifestyle. Usually you want to uh, name it, say, like you want your apartment to be in Renton. So you put that in here, and it'll tell you here, Renton, so you know where you live. Clothing and armor. So we have an armor jacket and a helmet, so you can add armor. You can add any armor here you want. You get an armor vest, or if you want something more um, upgraded, you can go down here. You go to high fashion, get suits and stuff that are armored. If you want uh, cloaks, if you want clothing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, one of the things I always like to get in clothing is get yourself a ski mask. That's a good thing to have if you're going to be doing crime. Got to have a ski mask. If you want specialty armor, ballistic masks, those are here. If you want super upgraded security armor, you got those here. Remember, these are going to be restricted and high availability. Oh, when you're looking at your armor, if you want to see what it does for your armor class, it's here. Armor class in Shadowrun is basically how many dice you roll plus your body to absorb damage. Now, another thing to note here too is when you're building your character, um, three is usually average for your character in any given uh, attribute point. If you go over here, you can add Nuyen with Karma. If you want, you can add up to 10 Karma to your Nuyen, which gives you 10, or gives you a few, th like 2,000 for each Karma you spend. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 20. Or, so, anyways, so that's that. Um, street gear. You go over to weapons, so you got your um, Steyr TMP. This is going to machine pistol. It tells you your damage rating here, 7 physical. Your recoil compensation. Your armor piercing, which is 0 for this weapon. If your weapon is uh, a melee weapon, it's going to have reach. If it's a taunt or something like that, it might have reach of 1 or 2. And then you have weapon fire modes. If it's a uh, pistol, it probably going to be single action. This is a machine pistol which has single action, burst fire, fully automatic. One of the um, 
cool machine pistols I usually like to get is the Remington Suppressor. It's a suppressed Remington. It's got 7P damage and it's got a good accuracy of 6 for a pistol. Uh, concealment of plus 0 and it costs 700 bucks. Has single, uh, single, single action and burst fire ammunition per clip or magazine if you're a gun guy we call it a magazine you get 15 in your magazine <clears throat> now this is going to tell you where that gun is found it's in gun haven 3 page 9 so look again if you want to see where that is you go gun haven and then go to page 9 alright so we're going to go over to uh, different types of weapons. So these are machine pistols, you got blades, clubs, uh, unarmed, I don't know why they put that here. Oh yeah, okay, so you get knuckles, um, plasteel boots. So what this will do is add uh, 2P, it'll be a base of 2P to your unarmed attacks. Uh, shot gloves are good, they do 8 stun. So the difference in damage types, physical is going to go on your physical condition track. Stun is going to go on your stun condition track. Now if you have an overflow of stun, so if they hit you with a lot of stun, it overflows in a physical. If you have an overflow of physical, that means you're dying. If you have too much overflow in physical, if it's twice the number of your physical condition track, you're automatically dead unless you spend karma, or you burn karma to not be dead. Okay, so where I'm looking over here is in the other info tab on the right side. You'll have build summary here, which tells you how much Nguyen and Karma and stuff like that you have left. Other info is going to give you your character information of what you're able to do, like your swimming movement, flying movement, movement on land. So you got 20, 14 walking, 28 running, whatever. All right, so then you have your armor rating here. So where it says 14 armor and modifier is 3, the modifier is going to be your um, cyberware. So you have dermal plating rating 3. So you have that here, rating 3. That gives you an extra 3 armor. Okay, so when you're um, building a character, another thing to realize is you can only have so much armor on at one time. So you can't have armor clothing on and an armor jacket. It's not going to stack. So armor 6 does not stack with armor 12. So let's say you put on armored clothing as well as an armored jacket. Your armor is still going to be 17, even if you put on armor clothing. Now in Chummer, it has a little button here that tells you what's equipped, what's not equipped. So let's say you unequip your armor, your armor class is going to drop. Oh, you got helmet on too, so that's availability, armor 2. So if you click on that, it goes down to armor 3. So let's go ahead and re-equip. Now it goes back up to 17. Okay, so uh, your base armor is going to be 0 until you put on armor or you buy cyberware that's going to be like dermaplating or bioware which is going to be your um, skin ortho skin let's see these are ortho skin upgrades let's see where's ortho skin ortho skin ortho skin here so ortho skin is the bioware version of your dermal plating which is your bio armor so it's going to be like thicker skin but it absorbs damage <clears throat> now this does not stack with dermal plating so if you have a bonus to your armor from ortho skin and dermal plating they don't stack so you're just wasting money and essence it's not a good idea okay so let's go on to weapons let's see already went on weapons so let's look at gear alright so gear you have communication gear which you're gonna add 
So yeah, under here you have ammunition, armor enhancements, audio enhancements, biotech, breaking in and gear. So <clears throat> each little tab is going to give you different stuff. So breaking in and gear, you got auto pickers, you got your lock picks. Now remember you always want to look at the availability and look at the cost. And sometimes you're going to have a rating. So when you're upgrading your rating, always look to make sure that the availability doesn't go up past 12. Things like, uh, um, let's look at what would go up. Um, IDs. So if you want to get a fake SIN. That's your basic identification, your system identification number. If you put it at a too high a rating, the availability will go up. If you go to a lower, rate, lower rating, availability goes down. And remember, also look at the F or the R, forbidden or restricted. If there's no availability, zero here, you can just pick that up. That's no problem. So the higher the availability, the harder something is to get. Okay. So let's look at other gear. Let's go to vehicles and drones. So vehicles are here. You have your bikes, cars, trucks. Now vehicles are usually pretty expensive. So if you want to get a moving truck, it's a 95 grand. It's a lot of money. Most people start out either with a motorcycle or a scooter or they go for like a little car. You could always worry about getting a bigger car later on down the road. You get like a Dodge Xeon for 18 grand. But if you want some kind of luxury thing, it's going to be really expensive. However, <clears throat> once you uh, pick a car, you can add upgrades to it. So if you go to add modification, right click, add modification, it has all the list of upgrades you can get on a vehicle. Yet again, you're going to also look down here at the source to find out where this upgrade is coming from. <clears throat> Most of my scene come from Rigger 5.0, and that is your vehicles and drones. Uh, I didn't really show you any drones. Let's see if they have drones on here. So drones different sizes so you got huge drones you have large drones small drones <clears throat> so if you got a drone you're gonna have different upgrades that you can add to drones drone weapon mount I don't see anything in there. Let's see. Drone weapon mount. I don't see any drone weapon mounts. Hmm. Maybe because it's small? I guess you would just have to use your vehicle weapon mount for this. <clears throat> Alright, so those are your drones and vehicles. Next thing, and then the last thing, is going to be character information. This is all stuff you're going to make up for your specific character. You have your sex, male or female, age, how old you are, eye color, hair color, height, weight, skin color, name, and then you can put your player name here if you want to. Um, description of what your character looks like. The background, where they grew up and stuff. What kind of concept you're going for. If you're going for a street samurai, which is a guy that you know, runs around throwing swords around. And then you have your mages and you know, casters, things like that. Um, so basic description of your character. What they do. 
and then notes down here. I like to put in different rule notes for things um, that maybe I want to know while I'm playing. So let's say if you don't know what low light vision does, you're going to look that up in your rule book, copy and paste it down into your notes. So when it comes up in play, you can see, oh yeah, this is what night vision does. All right, it makes low light into bright light or, you know, dim light into bright light. <clears throat> so those are all the things here. Uh, once you do that, you're going to maybe add a mugshot so this is the pixels you're allowed to have 210 by 310 and you could add here and just pick a file from your computer and you could add the picture and it will show up right here so let's see what that would look like let's see I'm gonna go desktop let's see it's not here Okay. I don't have any pictures. Anyways, I can show you what that looks like in another video. Alright, so um, once that's all done, I forgot to talk about this tab here, Spell Defense. This is going to tell you what you roll for different types of spells that are casted at you. So if it's indirect soak, you get roll 20 dice, so that's your armor plus willpower. Indirect dodge, that's going to be your agility plus your reaction. So that's all going to be calculated for you. Okay, so once you're finished making your character, you're going to mark character as created. And that will change to where you're not going to be able to go in here and start messing around with things willy-nilly. And then if you want, you can go to see print, and you can print something. You can print this out as a character sheet, and it'll put it all nice in for you in a character sheet. It'll give you all your, you know, stuff, all your equipment. It'll put your notes in there anything that you want to have on your character sheet. Vehicles, weapons, and you can do this as a character sheet Shadowrun 5. You can do this as um, text only, vehicle block, S oh, Shadowrun 5 uh, group by skill, so that's going to put your skills first. So if you have a higher skill in automatics, it's going to group that before your archery instead of doing it alphabetically. If you do skills by name, it's going to do it alphabetically. Same thing if you just do it regular. It's going to do them in order of how they are. So. Let's look at let's see dossier. So this is something if you just wanted to give a handout to other players to see what your character is, you can do that and won't give all the specifics. Calm links, I guess if you're really interested in what your calm link is, <laughs> you can do that here. So this is kind of cool to have because if you get matrix hacked or something, it has condition monitor boxes you can check off as you're taking matrix damage. And it's real quick how you can reference your attack, your sleaze, data processing. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video. If you have any questions, uh, comments, concerns, um, you can put them down in the uh, comment section and I will try to address them. Thank you and this has been a basic uh, overview of how to use Chummer 5A.